that's it. I'm quitting. I I'm stopping this YouTube channel. We we've done it all now. We've done it all. We've won countless European top flights. We've won Champions League. We've won absolutely everything. I mean, what else is there to win? I mean, I'm running out of patience. So I think it's time to quit while we're ahead. Call it quits. Call it quits on this whole Tom FM thing. Ah, just had an email come through from uh, an unknown person. Let's have a look, shall we? Hello, Tom. Well, they've got my name right, at least. I am the chairman of Club Deportivo Universidad San Martín de Porres, based in the capital city of Peru, Lima. We were founded in 2004 by the local university, but we didn't need to work our way up through the leagues. We simply bought our place in a division from the team who won the second division in 2003. Pretty simple. Wait, you can just buy yourself into the league? Is that a thing? But how much does it cost? Like, can we gather together as a group and, you know, start a club in Peru and just buy ourselves into the top division? Is that how it works? Like, Tom FM FC, can we do that? Now, the early years were good. We've won three league titles in 2007, 2008 and 2010, and even made the round of 16 in the Copa Libertadores in 2009. Okay, seems like they had a pretty decent start to life, but I mean, they have bought their way to success by sounds of things. However, good times don't always last forever. In 2012, the club's directors decided to withdraw the club from the Football League as a result of player strikes and problems with perceived corruption within the league and sports professional bodies. Twelve days later, those issues vanished and we rejoined the Football League. And there we go. There's the weird sort of rules, corruption, strange things going on that I, I kind of want to distance myself from. That does not sound something that I want to be involved with. But since then, we have never been able to recapture the form that took us to three league titles and have instead languished in the bottom half of the table and we haven't even finished in the top 10 since 2012. I mean, okay, they've not finished in the top 10. Doesn't sound too bad. I'm sure they can get themselves back up there. Perhaps part of the issue is that we are a little bit impatient with our managers. Since our inception 18 years ago, we've had 30 different managers. 13 of them didn't even manage 10 games with us. Ah, right. So the reason they've not done very well is because they have such a high manager turnover, surely. I mean, that seems like a ridiculous amount of managers for a short amount of time. Um, they just need someone to come in and settle the ship, I suppose, don't they? Things hit the rock bottom last season. We finished 17th and were due to be relegated until we were miraculously saved. Cusco, who had finished 16th, were docked points. They had been awarded a 3-0 win earlier in the season as their opposition fielder and ineligible player. It later turned out that the player was eligible, and as a result, the original 2-2 draw stood, and we jumped ahead of Cusco by one point, relegating them and keeping us in the top division. Okay, so all of a sudden, this team have got such an interesting story. Bought themselves into the top division, became the champions, had some weird sort of issue with the club and corruption potentially and now they're terrible and they've only been relegated because of random eligibility rules that seem to have been it all sounds a bit weird to me but I'm, I'm interested in this story now what's the point to it what do they want the point is we don't want to be in this situation again we've been scouring the globe for a talented manager to lead us into a new era we're impressed with what you did with Wrexham and Aberdeen, but our eyebrows were raised the most by your work with Grasshoppers. It seems like they were in a similar situation and really helped hop them to the top. And there we go. They want me to be in charge of the club. Makes a lot of sense. Right, what are the terms and conditions then? So if you'd like to accept a job offer, here is the challenge. Within 10 years, we need to rebuild and get back to the top spot in the league. Qualify for Continental Competition's group stages. Become known as the best team in Peru. Reach the latter stages of Continental Competitions. And win the Copa Libertadores. Maybe we could... Vamos to the top? Regards, El Presidente. Well, it very much reminds me of a job that we did at Grasshoppers in Hop to the Top. And clearly these guys are big fans. Um, I guess we could try and Vamos to the top with them. It's an interesting story. It's somewhere we've never managed before. You know what? Maybe I won't pack this whole time of him in. 
maybe we'll carry on. Maybe, maybe we've got another story in us. Hello and welcome to Vamos to the Top. And hello and welcome to Universidad San Martín de Porres, which I think from now on we're going to refer to as USMP because that's what the university is known as that they are under the umbrella of. Also much less of a mouthful than Universidad San Martín de Porres. Much simpler. So welcome to the new series. I am very excited about this one. We've, uh, we've done a lot of saves in Europe and I've been having an itch to play in South America for a long, long time. And finally, we're scratching that itch with this save, where hopefully within 10 years, we're going to have a phenomenal time here in Peru. Plenty of challenges to get ourselves going, all sorts of stuff to do with, of course, the dream at the end being the Copa Libertadores final. Also, given that it is the start of a brand new series, I think we put a likes target on today's video. Let's see if we can hit 500 likes on this video. That would be absolutely phenomenal if we could. The more likes the video gets, the more it gets pushed out into the YouTube algorithm, the more new people come along. And if you are new around here, make sure you do click that subscribe button and join the team and the gang and whatever we're calling ourselves around here. Also, let me know down in the comment section what you think about this save and how well you think we're gonna do. Are we going to win a couple of Rathores or are we going to absolutely flop and fail? If you do want to find out a little bit more about the team, I'll leave a link to the Spanish Wikipedia page for this team, which you can translate to English automatically in Google Chrome or any web browser, I imagine. But it does have uh, some really interesting information about the club, including the ridiculously long list of managers that they've had since their inception in 2004. So first and foremost, let's get to know this squad, shall we? These are the players that hopefully are going to take us to glory, at least some of the way to glory. I'm sure we'll end up replacing all of them at some point, but it is a decent squad to start off with. Now, there are a couple of issues with the team, but we'll talk about the positives first. And the best player we have is a 31-year-old Argentinian left-winger called Gonzalo Verón, who looked absolutely fantastic for not just this division, but actually I'd have him in a lot of different teams. Very pacey, good dribbling and good crossing, good first touch, good passing technique. He looks like the focal point of this team, essentially. We also have a stalwart at the back in Alejandro Gonzalez, currently on loan from Sporting Crystal, another team in our division. But he's on loan with us right now. And I think as a centre-back, would be pretty handy. A little bit small at six foot, maybe for a centre back for my liking, but 14 heading, 13 jumping reach, pace of 12, not too bad. Decent mentals though, and hopefully a good leader in this team. We also have a fantastic goalkeeper in Carlos Solis, who looks absolutely fantastic for this level. Command of the area and first touch, a little bit low for my liking, but I think for what we need, Everything else is pretty solid, I would say, across the board. So I'm excited to see how he performs over the next season or so. But he is one of the club's biggest earners on £1,000 a week. If he doesn't perform, he's going to have to go at some point. So the three best players are three of the oldest players in the team, actually, which is maybe a little bit concerning. But there is plenty of potential in this club. As you can see, if we sort it by potential ability, there's quite a few players here with five-star potential that we need to start playing more and more, I think. Uh, Gabriel Delgado is the pick of the bunch, the centre midfielder, who I think will end up playing quite a lot this season for us in that centre mid attack role. More on the formation in just a moment's time. But with five-star potential, only 18 years old, this guy, for me, could go quite far. Also, two young centre-backs with five stars are potential as well. Look really, really solid. Uh, Sebastian Rocha, who is a uh, tall-ish centre-back, 17 years old, 14 jumping reach, 13 heading, has got quite a way to go before he's properly, properly first-team ready, I think. I believe Hamir is a little bit better to start off with. He's also 17 years old, but 14 heading, 14 marking, 11 tackling. It looks all right to me. The issue with him is his pace is only nine, and that could be deadly against us if we come against pacey strikers. But there are a couple of issues with this team. Uh, notably, we have no recognised striker in the team. The only person who's capable of playing striker is Gonzalo Veron, who can play up front and would probably do a fairly decent job. But with composure of 10, that does worry me a little bit. So, already, I'm kind of thinking we have to do a job to bring some strikers into this team. Because, quite frankly, uh, you can't win games without strikers. I don't care if you like strikeless formations. I don't. So, we've got to go for this. We've got to sign some strikers. We're also lacking a bit in the centre of midfield. We only have four people who can play in the centre of midfield, really. Uh, one of them is on loan at the club right now. Uh, one of them is not that great, with five-star potential, though. 
Delgado will probably play quite a bit. The only good guy we've got in centre mid is Juan Tuesta, who is another centre mid on attack. So maybe, actually, we need to bring in some more playmaker players. He plays centre mid on attack. And maybe we get, uh, who's the good guy? Was it Delgado? Yeah, Delgado as his backup for this season, maybe. So there's definitely room for improvement in this team. So I think the first port of call is to scout out some strikers and midfielders. Let's have a look at our scouting. We don't have a scouting team. Okay, um, hmm. that's not ideal. Uh, we should, hmm. I'll get on that. I'll get on that in a second. So I guess in the meantime, we just offer out trials to players and just see who wants to sign for us. I mean, Emmanuel Adebayor is interested in a transfer to us. I mean, it depends if we can pay his wages or not, but Adebayor would be a great signing. Can, we can't scout him out, obviously. We've got no scouts, but can we offer a trial just, just to see what he's like? And then seeing as we know nothing about anyone unless they're 35 years old and probably not that good anymore uh hmm, we <laughs> essentially it's going to be a case of offering trials out to a million players if i just like put in randomly finishing at least 15 200 players come up, apparently i'm not quite sure how i feel about that if i put up to 20 right 12 players come up with potentially 20 finishing let's give them all trials you get a trial 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 okay contracts offered to some scouts it turns out it's pretty hard to do that also coaches as well we've got players coming in on trial let's have a look at this club culture and see what the board expects us to do in this first season then where we are supposed to be in trouble supposedly according to the email that we got from el presidente so they want us to finish in the relegation playoffs wow what an ambition that is uh, avoid finishing bottom of the league right so as long as we just don't come bottom and we finish one above bottom i think we might be okay so there's, there's literally no expectation on us at all but by the end of the next season they do want us to become an established league one team so um, i mean I think you're asking quite a bit here. And then the season after that, finished in the top half. They want a really quick turnaround, don't they? Which makes sense from that sort of five bullet point list that they gave us. Hold on. Hold on a second. Club culture. Sign Ivorian players. As in players from the Ivory Coast. Okay, so I've just done some digging online and I can't find anything. Like I, is this a bug or is this actually a thing that they quite like in real life but just nothing on the I don't know I'm searching in English aren't I? I'm not searching in Spanish so that could be part of the issue but if anyone has any idea as to why this club want to sign Ivorian players please let me know oh and of course with our limited recruitment package uh, there are no players from the Ivory Coast who are interested in signing for, in fact there's a few who aren't interested in signing for us but I mean these are just the big reputation players Frank Kessie Zaha, Pepe, I mean, yeah, okay. Or Pepe, I should say. I'm used to saying Ricardo Pepe, aren't I, from uh, the Wrexham way. I mean, Solomon Kalou is available. Uh, he needs a striker. I mean, what would he want? He just wouldn't. Okay, that's fine. So maybe no Ivorian players this time around, but we'll have to think about it in the future. Also, thinking of signing players, uh, we don't have much in the way of transfer budget. £35,000 and nothing in the wage budget. Ah, well, that could be an issue. This £600,000 we've got on our overall balance is um, predicted to run out pretty quick. Hmm, okay. At least all these players on trial are joining the club. Surely we're going to find someone in here who's worth signing, particularly Adebayor. Although you're rubbish, you're rubbish, you're rubbish, you're rubbish, you're rubbish. You're good. Jose Gonzalez Vigil. Okay. What about Adebayor? I might just do it. I mean, surely he's not going to break the bank. Surely he's not going to break the bank. Star player, that's fine. Want to go on a Spanish intensive language course, we'll pay it for you. Don't worry. Uh, uh. Hmm. Well, it was all looking so good. What is the maximum we can offer him? Two and a half grand. What if we adjust the budgets and put it all into the wage budget? That allows us to give him 2.6 grand a week. Okay, right. Um, hmm. What if we give him a big signing on fee of like 25 grand and then just promise him a lot of money and bankrupt the club in the first season because of it? It's Adebayor. I've pushed everything up a little bit. Let's see how this goes. He loves it. We're at... Right, our first signing here 
is Emmanuel Adebayor amazing? Oh, but we're in competition with Adelaide United and Western Sydney Wanderers. No. Surely he'd want to come to us. We, we got there first. Don't break my heart in this first episode, please. Not, not like this. He's broken my heart. Emmanuel. <sighs> We've been informed that Adebayor had no hesitation in accepting Western Sydney Wanderers' offer over ours, with it being a very straightforward decision for him to make. He's looking forward to moving to Western Sydney Wanderers due to the infrastructure and standard of living on offer in the country. What's Australia got? that Peru hasn't. Maybe he likes kangaroos and koalas. That that might be it, you know. Okay, well, I, I'm not going to rush in to sign the other players on trial just yet. This is what preseason's here for. You know, it's here to have a look at these players and see what they're like. Now, for whatever reason, we have a preseason tour in Spain. We are traveling away to Spain. So we're going to Elche, Fuenlabrada, Cartagena and Valencia, which, I mean, it's, it's going to be considerably expensive for us to travel to Spain. But... It's what was there when I arrived at the club. Then we get into the league stuff and uh, we'll talk more about the league tomorrow, I think. Basically, it's a bit complicated, but we'll get our heads around it pretty quickly. Don't worry. But I mean, it, it would be rude not to see how this team is looking against Elche. So I've picked what looks to be the strongest team in a 4-2-3-1 formation. Now, there's three ways I feel like this team could go. I think we go ultra attacking in a 4-2-3-1. We go on the counter-attack in a 3-5-2, essentially. Or, we do something a bit mental. And I'm not entirely sure on instructions for this sort of shape, but this kind of fits in all of the players in their very best position. But I'm not sure how well it would work. So I think for now, we stick to this. I mean, I literally have no idea, no idea how good we are compared to Elche. I, I presume they're going to smash us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, 1-0 Elche inside of two minutes. But, you know, it, it's a highlight. A highlight straight from kickoff for us. Are we going to bounce back immediately? The, uh, the answer... The answer's no. They... I've got to sit through all of this now. Got to sit through whole 90 minutes of this. Okay, uh, we have just finished the friendly. And good news, we scored a goal. Uh, we got a goal through Juan Tuesta um, in the first half, actually. It was pretty decent going as uh, it was just worked into the area. First time shot, bottom corner, beautiful. And we pointed him out as a, as a bit of a danger man. We said he was very, very good. Uh, that's awkward. You've seen the screen now. I meant to hide that from you. Um, maybe a 4 2 3 one's not the way to go. Luckily, there is a lot of pre-season to go and we've got plenty of time to try and get some extra players into this team. But I think that is going to about wrap it up for today's first episode of Vamos to the Top. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a lovely evening. I will speak to you all soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.